Steve Julin, MMA Mania. All right, Steve, whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right, Daniel Weichel, how are you doing today, sir? Doing great, thank you. How are you? I'm excellent, and I'm really excited about this rematch you've got coming up here at Bellator 203. So let's start with the preparation. How has it been going getting ready to face Patricio Pitbull for a second time? It's been a great camp. You know, um, I don't, uh, I didn't really took too much time off after the fight got canceled. Um, of course, I got one or two weeks keeping it easy, but I was, basically I was, uh, on the mat till then and kept training and kept preparing for the next fight. So it sounds like you're already in shape and on weight and ready to go. You could take the fight today if it wasn't a week away. It is. It is, it is exactly like that. Just give me a big meal <laughs> and after that I can go and fight. Sounds good to me. We've heard some interesting things from Patricio Pitbull over the last week and I want to address a few of them here with you because I'm sure you will disagree with some of his opinions. The first one I want to bring up to you is he thinks that your four-fight win streak isn't really real because he believes you didn't win either of the split decision fights that you had with John Teixeira and Emmanuel Sanchez. What do you say about that? Um, You know, I think with uh, Emmanuel Sanchez, I think I won this fight clearly. You know, uh, I know it was it was uh, also it was a close fight, but I won definitely. And um, with uh, John Texera, I know it was a very close fight, but I feel that I had the advantage from the second round on. My cl- my uh, my punches were more uh, specific, and uh, I had a better impact on the on the punches. And yeah, I think I really won the close fight with uh, Texera. I know it was very close, but I also see me saw me a little bit ahead, definitely. Well, with two out of three judges seeing it your way in both cases, it's kind of hard to disagree with that. But Pitbull also went on to say that he thinks that the featherweight division needs fresh opponents and he's tired of seeing people that he's already beaten. If you look at the last fight, it it makes sense to have a rematch, you know, especially when you see what happens in the first round and um, that I was close to finish him. Okay, he won the fight. I don't take anything away from him. But I fought also, I think I fought the toughest, uh, contenders who were out there. And there's no one else out there who, who they can put in front of him. Uh, who is a, um, a fair number one contender. That's one of the few good things that he did say. He said he's only been knocked down a few times in his career. And you're one of the people that did it to him. So. He gives you credit for having an incredibly hard punch, but then he also went on to say, however, in the second round, I came back and I beat him definitively, so I've already proven my point. Yeah, um, like I said, he won, uh, don't take anything away from that, but I know where my mistake was. It was not technical fault, it was like an emotional fault. Like, I I lost my focus for a tenth of a second, and I paid for it. But this is not going to happen again, and uh, I will make it different this time. So is the key to this fight not getting too excited and getting too aggressive if you rock him or have him hurt? Is it to just stay calm, stay in the pocket, and not rush him? I am, aggress- I, I am aggressive, and I will be aggressive in this fight too, but I keep it inside of me. I don't rush. I, I have my, uh, my, my game plan. I have my focus. And I will execute that. So, as long as I keep my focus and um, I don't see him, he can do anything with me. Now, here's an interesting situation. We've heard Patricio say he's not fond of rematches, but you're obviously not in any way concerned about taking a second fight with him, and you think you can win that fight. But what if you do win and take the featherweight title? Does he get a rematch to try to get it back? I don't know. It always depends on how the fight plays out. Uh, if it's a close fight, I think he, w- he would deserve a, a, a rematch. But, uh, yeah, it all depends on how this fight's going. I think I would just enjoy the irony, though, of the guy who says rematches are boring, yeah. saying he wants a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> 
with this fight, you're traveling to Rome, Italy, so it's a short flight from Germany. How are you feeling about that? Uh, I feel great about it uh, in many ways. Uh, of course, it's a short flight. Um, that, that's really, really good. But also, um, a lot of my friends and fans and family are coming with me uh, to Rome. So my parents, my brother will be there. A lot of uh, guys from our gym will come to watch and to support me. So I will have great energy uh, out there, and um, I'm 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 already very uh, thankful and grateful to have so many uh, so an amazing support over there. Any thoughts on your entrance music for Bellator 203? Because I know a lot of people have compared you feature-wise to Drake in the past, and he did just drop a new album. Any chance you'd come out to a song by Drake? It's quite possible, but uh, I haven't uh, made the final decision, so we'll be surprised. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to that surprise then, but don't let it be a surprise who's cornering you. Fill me in who's going to be in your corner for this fight. Yeah, it will be, uh, actually it will be, um, one more person. It will, um, it will be the same corner like, uh, every time, uh, that I have in Dalton with my, uh, coaches, uh, Mohammed, uh, Wali, Neil Schlegel, and, uh, my training partner, Dennis, uh, Olivka. And also it will be my corner, uh, my teammate Max Koga, who's fighting in the PFL tournament right now. Um, he will be also in my corner to support me. Excellent. Well, I'm glad he's able to take time out from the tournament to do that. How is that going anyway? Yeah, I think it's the uh, the playoffs and um, the first fight um, in of the featherweight tournament uh, they did, uh, I think, four or five weeks ago. And, um, yeah, like Max will fight four days of, uh, five days after my fight, he will fight in uh, Long Island again. Wow. Well, I hope he's able to make a quick turnaround, get over there, and get ready for the next fight. But speaking of tournaments, Bellator did announce a welterweight tournament for later this year, and that follows up on the success they've already had with the heavyweight Grand Prix in the past year. So do you think maybe a featherweight tournament is something Bellator should pursue as well? I think definitely could be something very interesting. Uh... Because it's a stacked division, we have a lot of good fighters uh, in the 145 division, and I definitely think this would be very exciting. And it might answer some of Pitbull's questions about who is ranked and who is worthy and who is getting a match and who isn't, because he seems to think there's some sort of, I don't know, almost conspiracy theory by the way he talks about who he ends up fighting. Yeah, I don't know. You know, for me, what what counts the most, I want to stay active as a fighter. You know, of course, I want to fight the best fighters on this planet, and I'm happy to have a chance with Pitbull, but um, as a fighter, I want to stay as busy as possible. And like I said many times before, I'm I'm willing to fight anybody of the division four or five times a year. Uh, I don't care. I dominate. The, I will dominate the division, and I want to fight as many times as possible. Well, that works for me because we want to see you fight as many times as possible. But I do know that it's also getting to be quite a big number of fights in your career, almost 50 at this point. So what's the realistic amount of fights you can have, even if you have four or five fights in a year? How many can you have altogether? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I don't I don't set a date. I don't set... Uh, a limit. Um, my limit is when I when I'm not when I don't feel like doing this anymore. When I don't have the passion that I ha still have. When my body says, "Hey, this is not uh, going to happen anymore," then I will stop. But right now, I don't feel like this in any part. Do you feel it's dangerous for some fighters like Chuck Liddell, who may think they still have that passion and fire, but don't realize that their body is not physically what it used to be? I mean, a lot of people are asking me this week, you know, at 48 years old, should he still be fighting? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough question. And it also, I think, it also depends on how have you lived uh, your, your life after you retired. If you stopped training every day, if you, uh, if you still kept training or not, 
this is very important. If you if you stop training for three, four, five years, you don't have the rhythm anymore. You don't have the uh, the routine of a fighter. So I think then it's very difficult and dangerous to get back to to something the body is not used to anymore. But if if you if you stop fighting and you just keep going to training and keep your body fit and healthy, then I I would say it's still possible to to get back at it. So it's very uh it, it depends a lot on how how the lifestyle is uh yeah. Well, I think his fitness could be great if he has been training every day since he retired, but internally is where people would really be concerned because you can stay fit and healthy in every other respect, but there are some things that happen to your brain when you get concussions that you don't recover from. Yeah, definitely. I think this is this is something that you really have to listen to your own body. I think if you have a couple of knockouts in a row, you should stop. Definitely, there's danger, uh, obvious danger uh, for your brain, for your life. So um, I think if you're not able to to make this decision for yourself, you should have good friends around you and uh, that give you that advice and that push you a little bit in the right direction. I can understand that as a fighter, it's sometimes difficult to to find. Um, the 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 moment to step back or to to hold back even training or fighting doesn't matter but when you have the right people around you and that you can trust 100 percent then it's a big help uh to to make the right decision well i hope there are people around him giving him good advice and i'm sure there are people around you giving you good advice because you've never said otherwise so i would trust your teammates like i trust you and you don't take knockouts in multiple fights. In fact, you win multiple fights. So, not worried about your health one bit. Yeah. I also I feel I feel very very good. I uh, yeah. <laughs> so, as good as you're feeling, do you have any prediction on how the fight's going to go? I I realize you don't want to make predictions in most cases, but is there anything you'd like to see in the fight, like a first round knockout? Um, I, I don't know. I, I have no, no specific vision, but I visualize I really what the same what I did in training, what I did each and every sparring session. I visualize domination, controlling of distance, and, um, controlling distance in every part, like striking, wrestling, and on the ground. I think this is the key. And when I do that, I will find an opening for a punch, for a kick, or for the submission. Well, we look forward to seeing you find that opening. We look forward to a very exciting fight here at Bellator 203. And Daniel, as always, thank you for the time. And if there's anything you want to promote, sponsors or social media links, anything you like, please go ahead. Thank you. I really appreciate talking to you. And um, I want to thank all my fans for the amazing support. I want to thank everybody who comes to Rome to support me. Um, I'm really grateful to have such great fans and of course I want to thank my team MMA Spirit my sponsors Olymp Germany Fight Nature Allianz Vollbrecht Insurance and Thai for more thank you for the amazing support it's always a pleasure when I get a chance to talk to you so I look forward to our next interview as well thank you so much absolutely thank you and Mr. Kitchen thank you as well